Dispenser going up. Well, I guess that'll do. Almost five years ago, I made a video about what I considered my favorite weapon in TF2, the Rescue Ranger. The thing that makes this shotgun amazing to me is just how much it opens up a brand new way of playing Engineer. Being one of my first weapon review videos, it still holds a special place in my heart, and the early stages of my channel will always be a nostalgic memory of mine. But let's be honest here. This video fucking sucks, it's boring as hell, and I sound like I'm out of breath for some reason, so uh, I, I, you know, I guess I can confidently say I've only gotten better at doing this talking kind of thing. But, uh, but the main reason I, I've decided to pull a Hollywood and reboot the same thing four years later should be kind of obvious. This review of the Rescue Ranger is pretty outdated. Let's just start from scratch here and take a look at the shotgun that single-handedly changed the way that you can play Engineer. The stats are pretty wordy, but here they are. You can right click to pick up your buildings from far away at the cost of 100 metal, as well as fire bolts that can heal your buildings for 60 health. The major downsides include having only four shots in your clip, as opposed to the six that a regular shotgun has, half as much ammo in your reserve, and you're marked for death during and shortly after hauling your buildings. Also, for some reason, the stats list a downside that you spend metal at a 4 to 1 health to metal ratio when repairing your buildings using bolts, but to be honest, this really isn't a downside at all. I mean, maybe compared to how the Rescue Ranger used to work, where you could heal your buildings with bolts for free, it could be considered a downside, but that's in the past. It is current year. As far as I'm concerned, a 4 to 1 health to metal ratio is a pretty good deal. That's not even my opinion. That It's literally cheaper to heal your buildings with the Rescue Ranger than it is to heal them with your wrench. And yeah, compared to how it used to work, spending any metal to heal your buildings feels like a ripoff now, but what kind of world do you think that we live in here? You think you should just be able to straight up ignore an integral part of a class's skill ceiling by just equipping a weapon? No, ever, okay, just ignore that. Get, get that off the... But seriously, bypassing the metal reserve mechanic in addition to all the other advantages that the Rescue Ranger gives you was kind of ridiculous, and I'm happy that it's gone, because now engineers will have to actually learn metal management. If you don't already know what I'm talking about, there is a video on the internet somewhere about it, but basically a big part of playing engineer is keeping track of how much metal you have and spending it accordingly. And knowing your limits is much more interesting and rewarding than just knowing how to put your crosshair on your sentry and clicking the mouse. But even still, like I said, it's cheaper than the wrench to use your rescue ranger to heal your buildings, which is why this thing is essential to the defensive leveled sentry gun playstyle. A big pain in the neck when it comes to playing stock NG is that once you dedicate yourself to a play Place to set up, you're pretty much chained to the 10 by 10 foot space around your sentry until your stuff gets destroyed or you decide to move your base. And not only is it f***ing boring to babysit a sentry nest, but it's actually just putting you at a huge disadvantage. I know the turtle lifestyle is the punching bag of my channel by now, but I've got a couple more examples for you to further beat this thing into submission. Believe it or not, walking around is good for you. Not only does it burn calories, but it makes you a lot more aware of your surroundings. Checking out what's around the corner or standing on the high ground while your sentry gun watches your back can give you a better idea of what you're up against, and often you'll be able to see potential threats coming before they start assaulting your nest. But a big advantage to distancing yourself from your sentry gun in particular is that it makes you semi-immune to one of the spy's most common NG countering techniques, the stab and sap. Typically, a spy will try and make sure the engineer is dead before attempting to attach a sapper so it ensures that he won't be able to remove it. The stab and sap technique is pretty much the easiest thing in the world to pull off on an engineer who is close to his gun, since placing the sapper needs to happen in less than a second after the engineer is stabbed. But if you position yourself far enough away from the sentry gun to where the spy couldn't possibly reach the sentry after stabbing the engineer, you've basically given the spy a choice. Either stab the engineer and get killed, or sap the gun and reveal yourself to the enemy team and hope your revolver aim is on point before the NG unsaps his gun or his teammates eat you alive. Normally, I'd say that the spy would have to rely on his deathmatch skills to get out of the impending 1v1 with the NG, but that's another major unlisted downside of using the Rescue Ranger. You can't give anyone the meat. All you can do is just shoot people with bolts, which at close range can do upwards of 60 damage. Not bad, but most of the time, that's not going to be enough to reliably go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a majority of the classes. You 
suck. Not to mention the rescue ranger's bolts are a projectile, so trying to actually damage people with it takes a bit of getting used to. Unlike your buildings, most enemies won't be standing still. Not even regarding every listed downside on this thing, uh, the actual symbol this weapon should be displaying above the NG's head should just be a big sign that says, I cannot defend myself. Come engage in a one-on-one -on -one duel to the death with me. I am equipped with a BB gun. Now, call me a battle NG at heart here, but if I'm equipping the Rescue Ranger these days, I have to have a moderately high confidence in my own team's ability to shoot the enemy gamers who will get all up in my business. I've played this game for long enough now to where I can usually hold my own with a shotgun, so maybe if you consider yourself absolutely useless in deathmatch situations, equipping the Rescue Ranger doesn't really seem like as much of a nerf to your overall abilities. But trust me, if you can aim with a shotgun, the choice between the two becomes a lot harder. Whenever the discussion comes up regarding whether or not the Rescue Ranger is an overpowered unlock, especially in the arenas of higher skilled players, I feel like the biggest downside is that it essentially gives the Engineer about as many defensive options as the Medic, and everyone knows that if you catch a Medic out alone without their team, it's basically a free kill, unless they get a crit. <clears throat> While we're on the topic of what could possibly put the Rescue Ranger in the overpowered category, the only thing that tips it into the territory of unintentional cheesy bullshit is within a very specific situation where you're holding last, you have a line of sight to your sentry gun from inside the spawn room, and you can just infinitely fire bolts of the gun from a position where the enemy team can't reach you. This could probably be easily fixed, but the more you look into it, the more the issue of the strength of last point spawn rooms being too close to the objective comes into play, and that's a whole another can of worms regarding map design. I don't really want to get into anyway. So unfortunately, when you equip the Rescue Ranger, you have to give up a lot of your own self-defense and rely almost exclusively on your team to kill enemies if you find yourself without your sentry gun. However, if you simply cannot live without having some sort of personal firepower, I highly suggest equipping the pistol and basically just using it as your primary weapon until you need to heal or yoink a building. And speaking of yoinking, the second major feature of the Rescue Ranger is its ability to teleport any of your buildings into your arms at long range, something that I have observed to be highly underused by the typical engineer. Ever since heavy sentry gun damage buff, the slow and steady nerf to the Wrangler, and mainly the death of the Sigifu save, which was essentially the most overpowered combo in the history of engineer dumb, being able to save your buildings from an Ubered combo has become more and more difficult to pull off. But thankfully, we still have the Rescue Ranger and its glorious yoinking feature, something that I think has been sadly overlooked by engineers who would like to keep their buildings alive for a little while longer. Now, I realize it's not nearly as powerful as straight up just gigatanking your gun is, but as Grandpa Dane used to say, they can't destroy your sentry if it's not there. That's right, the modern strategy isn't to outheal your enemies anymore, it's just to yoink it right from out under their stupid nose. While pulling out the Wrangler to waste as much of their time as possible, make a run for it to a spot where you can disappear behind a corner in a flash. Then, right before the gun's health reaches zero, use the Rescue Ranger to teleport the gun out of the way and make your escape. Depending on how proactive your team is about killing or driving out the combo whose uber has now faded, you can decide whether to keep running for the hills or just waiting until the threat is gone before returning to your original position. If you're in a safe enough place, you can even temporarily place the gun back down to heal it back up to full health before coming back. Just be careful, since the rescue ranger leaves behind an obvious tracer that can point the enemy in the direction to where you ran off to, they may be inclined to chase after you and try to ensure your death, something that is made a lot easier by the marked for death while hauling downside. Jesus Christ, that's Jason Bourne. Another cool thing that the Rescue Ranger allows you to do is get your buildings into some pretty unorthodox positions, and oftentimes when it comes to sentry spots, the more unexpected, the better. But hey, just because the Rescue Ranger is the ultimate defensive level 3 supportive tool doesn't mean you should never use it while playing offensively. It's also very useful when pushing the card in payload since the constant stream of metal can allow you to keep moving your gun from area to area without having to completely rebuild or walk all the way back to bring it to a more forward position. It can also be used on King of the Hill maps or in 5 CP to keep your enemies on their toes to where your gun is at. Remember, moving your sentry gun to a new position every time it racks up a few kills is a great way to keep the enemy team from coordinating effectively against it. And don't forget, the Rescue Ranger's bolts do not remove sappers, replace ammo, or upgrade buildings. Might be obvious to some, but you'd be surprised how many people who don't play NG that much don't know that. So don't think just because you can keep it alive from long distance that you can just leave your sentry gun alone in the corner forever. You'll still have to keep visiting it from time to time.
time. To be honest, the Rescue Ranger is so unique in how it encourages the modern engineer to play smarter, more active, and more aggressively, even after all these years, even after my own personal engineer playstyle has evolved away from the more defensive, building-focused strategies, I still regard the Rescue Ranger as my favorite weapon in TF2. I have a lot of respect and admiration for weapon designs that are able to synergize with the classes in order to give them more focused, but situational advantages, and this gun has always been a staple of that concept. Also, I think it's pretty cool that the little wave thing on the monitor gets flatter as you uh, spend your metal. It's kind of cool. Anyway, that's my video presentation about the Rescue Ranger, and I hope I get an A-plus on my presentation because I stayed after school in the library to work on it, so thanks. Hey, what's up? Uncle Quarantine here. I got a question. Do you like this hat? Because you can buy this hat. The link is in the description. And I'd also like to tell you a little bit more about my uh, TF2 community servers. You probably already heard a little bit about them. They're called Uncle Topia. It's the perfect Uncle Utopia, hence the name. Uncle Topia is a place where uncles live in harmony. And what I mean by that is that it's basically just a TF2 server where it's just all the rules and maps that I like. Here are the rules, and here are the maps. Some things are still subject to change, but I mean, that's pretty much it. Uh, it plays basically just like a regular pub TF2 casual server. So if you're interested in checking it out, you can visit UncleDane.com slash servers for a list of servers and more information. Bye. Bye. All right, go ahead and stab him. <laughs> what the fuck? Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs>